Hello and welcome to this tutorial in Microsoft Excel brought to you by the IT Service. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at one of the tools Excel has for analysing data. There are lots of tools that allow you to analyse your data in Excel. Perhaps one of the best is the pivot table. Now if pivot tables fill you with fear and dread they really shouldn't. They are fantastic tools and there are a couple of tutorials to get you kicked off with those also on our website at www.theitservice.co.uk and no that wasn't just a shameless plug for the website. In this case though we're going to look at a tool called subtotals. Subtotals have always been there in Excel. We're using Excel 2010 here. Uh, it's pretty much identical to Excel 2007. Uh, if you're using an earlier version such as Excel 2003 or 2000 you'll find the same tool within the data menu as we're going to find here in the data tab on the ribbon. So the same tool there just in a slightly different location. What we're after doing is answering a simple question. How much money are we spending in each country with each shipping company we use? Looking here we have two columns that relate to this information. We've got the country in column I and we've got the shipping company in column F. We have three different shipping companies, Federal Shipping, Speedy Express and United Package and then we have about 20-25 different uh, countries that we ship to. The amount we're spending is here in column G. In order to achieve this the first thing we need to do is group the data together by the things we want to analyze. We want to know the total for each country and within each country for each shipping company so that's what we've got to group these things by. The easiest way to group the data is simply to sort it and we can do that either from here on the home tab by clicking on the sort and filter button or by going to the data tab. Now the subtotal tool we're going to use is on the data tab so I'm just going to go there now and do everything from there. So clicking on the data tab I've then got the A to Z buttons here. If I click on the A to Z button I'll sort by a single column and I want to sort by two the country and then within each country by ship via so instead I'm going to click on the sort button and that allows me to specify whatever I want for my sorting. I'm going to sort by ship country firstly. I want to sort by the values. I don't want any of this fancy rubbish that they've given, sorry, useful tools they've given us for sorting by say colour or font colour. I just want to sort on the values in the country column A to Z and then add level by the ship via column A to Z. Note this tick box at the top right corner. Uh, my data has headers. It does indeed. It's been formatted differently. The grey background has helped Excel pick up that there are headers. All you need to do really is make the headers bold and perhaps change the font colour or something like that. But if Excel for some reason hasn't picked up that you've got headers, do make sure you tick this box because otherwise your headers will end up somewhere in the middle of your data. Uh, so you know that's going to ruin your analysis completely and you'll have to start again and feel the shame and embarrassment. Click OK and we've now got our data sorted. Looking here we've got Argentina then Austria. Within each country we've got Federal Shipping, then Speedy Express, then United Package and then we move on to Federal Shipping again for the next country. So our data is now sorted, it's grouped together by the various columns, the various values that we wanted it grouped by. The next thing then is to use the subtotal tool. Once again I make sure I have a cell selected somewhere within the data and up here at the top right corner there's a button labelled subtotal. Remember again that if you're in an earlier version this subtotal tool is under the data menu. So I click subtotal and Excel brings up this dialog box with some suggestions. The suggestions are always wrong so ignore them. It's suggesting I look for each change in customer and I want to say no no look for each time the country changes. So we move from Argentina to Austria, from Austria to whatever was next, Belgium I think. So I want to say look for where the country changes I don't want to count the country, I want to add up, so that's sum, the freight value. In all seriousness Excel will load this dialog box with defaults. It's normally not right, it doesn't normally get this correct, so do double check that what you've got here is what you really want. So I want to say look within each country and add up the freight value. When I click OK that's exactly what it does. Looking here at the freight column I just scroll across so I can see the country as well. Underneath the bottom of Argentina's rows we have a total value for freight. And in fact if I make this column a little bit wider, double clicking there will auto fit it, you can see it tells me which country. So Argentina total 598.58. Scrolling down 
Austria total. Can't see that. Need to make that column wider as well. There we go. 739150. A bit further down, Belgium total, 1280 14. Obviously, that's uh, a lot of money to spend on mayonnaise and frites, but uh, worth it, I'm sure. That's good, but it's not the end of the picture. Top left corner, we've got three buttons, one, two, and three. Number one collapses all the data and just gives us a grand total. So we've spent in total $64,942.69 on freight. Clicking number two on these outlining buttons, gives me a breakdown by country. That might be useful. Furthermore, I can drill down. So if I'm particularly interested in Canada, for example, I can click the little plus there and drill down and see all the orders that have gone to Canada and how much I've spent on them. At the bottom of Canada, I've now got the little minus, so I can collapse that outline and just get the total for Canada again. And then the number three button at the top left here shows me the raw data. So I've got these outlining tools on the left that allow me to drill down or up again into that data. Great. Well, we're getting there, but I'm not actually where I needed to be. I wanted the breakdown by country, but I also wanted the breakdown for each of the shipping companies here. To do that, I just run the same tool again. So I click back on subtotal. This time, I don't want to look for changes in country. I want to know where one shipping company, the ship via field, changes to another. So at each change in ship via, again, I want to add up the freight, but, and it's a big but, I don't want to replace the current subtotals. If I do that, I'll lose the country by country breakdown, and I don't want that. So I'm taking the tick out of there to say add them in to the existing subtotals, and when I click OK, there we go. I now have, let me scroll across again, within each country, the total for federal shipping, the total for Speedy Express, total for United package. And again, if I just make that column a little bit wider, it actually does put those full titles in there as well. My uh, story doesn't end there. I still have another set of buttons come up here at the top. The number one, the grand total is still there. The number two, the country by country total is still there. But it's added another set of subtotals. Number three gives me a breakdown of shipping company within each country. So then each shipping country, a company within the next country and so on. And then finally, number four, I'm back to all my raw data. So a pretty good tool. Very, very simple to use. We simply sorted the data, potentially sorted it by more than one column, as in our case, and then used the subtotal tool to tell it what to summarize and what to add up or what to count or what to find the average of within each group. Of course, in practice, the story doesn't end there. You've produced this for your boss who wanted to know these figures for each company and for each country. You give it to your boss and he goes, yeah. All right, then. Put about the data back to where it was, though, will you? <sighs> you sigh, and you think, I'm going to have to take out each of these rows. No, Excel does it for you. All you do is go back to the subtotal button. Oh, I need to deselect that. I've, because I've selected this particular thing, uh, it thinks I'm just desubtotaling uh, de one line. So click back within my data, click on subtotal, and tell it, remove all and it will remove all the outlining and all the subtotals it had created for me. At that point, my job's done. Thank you for watching this. I hope you found it of interest and useful. Do check out the uh, tutorials on pivot tables if you haven't already, because they really are the bee's knees. Uh, and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.